in 10, 9, 8. Hi, I'm Dan Smigrod, founder of the We Get Around Network Forum. Today is Wednesday, November 29th, 2017, and you're watching WGAN-TV Live at 5. Hey, Emily. Hi, Dan. Uh, uh, Emily uh, Ullman is our guest today. She is the founder of Hopscotch Interactive, uh, a Matterport service provider based in San Francisco and also serving Berlin uh, Emily has been scanning for quite some time with Matterport, and she's uh, graciously agreed to uh, take us through the uh, I, what I would call uh, a guide to Matterport scanning or um, Matterport scanning for newbies. And, uh, and, and though I've had my camera since uh, July of 2014, for today, uh, uh, I will be uh, someone who has uh, never used Matterport. I've just gotten my camera and I got all kinds of questions as, as Emily takes us through a demonstration of scanning. Does that sound good, Emily? Sounds perfect, Dan. Great. So great. So if you're joining us today, this is day two of our workshop for the 3D scanning fundamentals and getting to know your camera and all the great things that you can do with it. And so what we're going to do today is we're going to do just a quick refresher of what we did yesterday to set up our camera. And then we are going to continue to scan this room and we're going to talk about some of the um, unique features um, that you'll find very commonly in the places that you'll be scanning. Those are going to include stairs and windows and mirrors. And we're going to talk about how to deal with those um, because they can present unique challenges. And then we're also going to look at our um, iPad while we're doing this. And we're going to talk about marking features and making sure that you are doing this to present, pre prevent yourself from having um, some headaches on the back end when you go to upload your scan and uh, play around with it in the workshop. So, that sounds great. I just got my Matterport camera. And uh, so I'm, I'm looking forward to learning about uh, scanning. Great. So the first thing that you do when you get your Matterport camera is you're going to want to set it up. And so we've got a Matterport here, Matterport camera, it's a Pro 2. And what we've done is we've put it on our tripod and I have right here something that I carry to all of my scans, Dan, and that is my tape measure. And then I also carry um, this small little blower and a small little brush that's gonna help me clean my lenses and make sure that there's no debris on it from you know, carrying it from inside to outside, et cetera. So, um, so I'm gonna check and make sure that my height is good. And I wanna have that set to four and a half inches, uh, four feet at six inches. And that's gonna be the top of where my clamp, my clamp is. And then I'm gonna slide my uh, camera into the groove there and make sure that it's secure. And um, my clamp is one that actually is open on both sides. And so I just wanna make sure there's no wiggle room there that it's not gonna jiggle or fall out because as the camera rotates and spins, and especially after you've done it like a hundred scans at a property, you might also wanna check it again or even in between just to make sure that it's not getting loose. Um, and then uh, the first thing that you're gonna to need to do after, well, after you've checked your lenses, blown, blown on them, made sure that there's no big debris like this, is you're gonna just brush off any lint that you see on there, just like you would um, with any camera. Um, don't use your fingers, don't use your mouth to blow um, air because you can get, um, you know, condensation on the, on the lens that can turn into little stains. So you don't want to do that. Um, but then you're going to want to pair this device first by turning it on. And I've got a good charge. I've got um, six hours and 54 minutes remaining on my camera. And that blue light, um, which I think you might be able to see from there, yes, is an indicator light telling me that my camera is turning on. Now, I didn't do the, the firmware update, I don't think, um, but, but you may get a firmware um, 
update notification when you connect letting you know that there is new firmware that needs to be updated to your camera. Do you know what that is, Dan? Uh, it probably would be helpful to know and also where that notification happens. Awesome. Okay. So we are now we're going to go from, this is my iPad. Okay. And then yep. I'm going to go into the capture app, which I've downloaded from the, the, um, the app store. And then right here, um, it's going to tell me camera firmware. And if there is a, either a pop-up there or it says camera firmware, and then it says update available, that's where you would see that you need to connect your camera to the iPad, um, hit OK, and start that update. And periodically, Matterport will uh, send updates. And it's even if you have the Pro 1 camera, they're still releasing updates for that one. Um, and then eventually they'll phase that out but the, um, in terms of the updates. Um, but the Pro 2 will continue, continue to have updates uh, for the lifetime of the camera, so the life cycle of that device. Um, and it says connect to camera right here, and I haven't done that yet. And so the way that I do that is actually not in this app, but I have to go back out and go to my settings right here, the little gear wheel. And then I need to change my Wi-Fi. Usually it defaults to whichever is the closest Wi-Fi near you. And then I need to select my camera. That's this uh, right here. Okay. It so, says uh, no internet. And again, connection. it'll say no internet. Yeah, and don't worry about that. Don't worry about it saying no internet connection because um, you don't need an internet connection. The Matterport itself is a self-enclosed Wi-Fi system. And so the only connection that matters right now is that the connection between this iPad and the camera is, is strong and has been bound. So okay, great. And uh, Emily, I know we have some... Uh... Uh, we get around network forum members that are in our virtual studio audience. I just want to let them know to feel free to ask questions of Emily as we're uh, going through the demo. Uh, just simply un unmute your mic and uh, ask away or raise your hand, whatever you feel comfortable with. Absolutely. Absolutely. Okay. And will they, will I know that they're asking the questions through you or will I see uh, you'll, them? you'll hear them and see them. Uh -huh. Okay, great. Great. Uh -huh. Yeah. Ask away folks. Um, so back to the capture app. Um, now it's connected. So up at the top here, it'll say camera connected. Mm -hmm. And that's, right. gonna, that's gonna let me know that I did it right. And it may kick you off at some point, and then you would just repeat the steps. And you don't need to worry about it, um, you know, getting disconnected normally. Um, and it'll also, this is also a battery indicator here, right? So the battery indicator is telling you the power that's remaining on your Matterport. Now that's different, Dan, than the power remaining on your iPad, okay? And so you wanna make sure that you're paying attention to both this battery status, mm -hmm. all right? And that battery status. So that one's 69 or 68% here. Um, and that one is 100% because I just charged my iPad. And, uh, but you'll notice that the battery, of course, the big lithium ion battery in that device is going to last much longer, um, you know, many, many hours, seven to nine hours. Uh, and so it's not um, going to deplete as quickly as this one. So this one you may need to recharge um, while you're scanning, have a backup battery source or keep your cable with you. Um, so that you can, uh, if you'd need to take a break, you can plug it in, or sometimes I plug it in um, at, at an outlet where I'm standing and then just moving the camera, even just for a few minutes really helps. Um, now, what we've done is we've actually already scanned a little bit in this space. So you can see that we have a number of scans that were done uh, yesterday. And so we're coming back to the space for the second time. And what we're going to do is we're going to now add to this model. And I, a lot of, I've even seen people ask this question before saying, can I have a, can I upload a model and then can I add scans to it? And the answer is yes. 
you can definitely add scans to any model. You can delete scans off a model and then add scans to it, even if you've already uploaded it. And then you can also um, just continue from wherever you left off the next day or a month or even a year later. Does that, um, get, does that count towards my free scans in my membership, my uh, subscription with Matterport? Yeah, uh, once you've uploaded it once, um, you won't have any charges for re-upload because you're only charged once for that standard upload. Um, where it might become an issue eventually, um, although um, I haven't noticed that it's been a big issue, is that uh, you'll start to have a lot of scans in your account. Um, and one of the ways that you can kind of keep track of those is to rename them before you upload them. So we'll get into that in a minute um, because I'm going to show you later how to duplicate a scan and then to save a copy of it and to kind of mark those as originals. And then to make sure that you're, you never leave your scan, you never leave a job without first duplicating the, the last version that you made. So mm -hmm. that's just a major best practice for you um, in your business. Um, and okay, so our camera is connected and it is on. And now I am going to go ahead and hit this button here, the capture 3D scan, which is gonna get that 3D data. Um, and then also the 360, um, the HDR photo imagery that we need in order to, um, to create the tour. So I'm gonna hit this button here and we're gonna see, see if we are good to go in terms of um, connectivity. So uh, I think you scanned that yesterday. Now you're scanning today. Did anything in your environment uh, change? The yes. piano moved someplace or? There's a chair I just moved. I just moved. This bench moved. Um, I moved a number of things. So let's see what happens. It might actually not work. Well, in uh, part one, you talked about keeping the, the space uh, uh, frozen, nothing changed. So you, you got a number of exactly. things changing and may, maybe we'll, we'll find out what, what you do when you do have a problem because something's changed and the scan doesn't work. That's right. And this yeah. is way less than ideal because in a normal situation, I wouldn't change a thing. Um, because if I change something, uh, I would run into, I would run into that error. And one of the things that's like, I kind of try and guess, is it aligning properly down, down here? It says aligning. So it's already transferred the data from where, the camera. Where does it say that? Oh, lining? it set it down here. It said aligning, but we are lucky because it looks like scan number. It's, it'll say it down here it, underneath where you scan, where you hit uh, capture scan, it'll say um, transferring and then it'll say aligning. And then now um, that spot here uh, did actually work and it popped up and we can just see that if we preview that scan this way. Um, we ended up high. You, can you see yourself? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Hi, Dan. Hi, Dan. <laughs> it did work. So okay. I'm really excited about that because that means that we should have no problem moving on to our next scan, which is even further away from some of these things that changed. Uh, so in this space, I would estimate that maybe 5% of the, of the data had changed. And so it was enough to not confuse the camera. Um, if later you're, if you bought your Matterport because you want to make a video game or you want to do some, uh, you know, downloading of an OBJ file, which is an object file used for, for 3d, um, 3d modeling, then you're going to have some stuff to clean up because you're going to have data in different places, right? Things that you didn't expect or want. Um, but um, that's for more advanced stuff, and we're not going to get into yeah, that. Yeah, uh, Emily, I'm just the newbie, so I'd just be happy if I, I know how to, to just sc scan a house that has some stairs and a couple levels. I think. Yeah, 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 we're going to do that for you today. Okay, okay. so now um, our, our next move, Dan, because we've, we've already scanned, um, we've got now our 11th scan, and it looks like everything is nicely spaced. Um, and you'll notice that I'm not, I'm not putting my camera right in the corner anywhere. Because? Because you don't want to be too close to walls and you don't want to be um, making any kind of adding any scan placements that are really awkward for the viewer. Okay, so, so that, that confuses me, Emily, because I, I, I read with the, uh, the, the Matterport Pro 2 camera with its super duper high quality mm -hmm. output that I can use the, uh, the snapshots 
for uh, photos. So mm -hmm. wouldn't, wouldn't I want to take a picture from the corner of the room in order to yes. get the widest angle? Of you could. The you can do that and and that would be the one exception would be if you're going to okay. use these images for snapshots and you're going to download the snapshots um and there's no there's no problem with over scanning really your biggest problem is going to come when you under scan a space okay um hi and so if you're under scanning a space then you're going to have that issue if you're over scanning because you want to add scans to have different elevation or to put it in the corner then you will want to place it um, closer to the wall you may still have that issue of being too close to an object um, which can result in misalignment so i just want to caution you that um, even if you go to the corner you need to stay 18 inches, you keep the camera 18 inches from the wall. Um, and so for anybody um, in Europe, that's about um, a meter and a half, or a half a meter, right? So stay at least a half a meter away from the wall. Now I usually shoot uh, my, uh, with my DSLR camera mm -hmm. at about doorknob height. Would I be reducing the, the height of the Matterport camera for those scans and is that a problem? It's not a problem. Um, if you are using it, if you're going to double up your camera, your Matterport camera to try to replace your DSLR, then you should uh, experiment with the heights um, to see what you like best. And um, I have done scans at very high heights. So expanding my tripod all the way up to the highest level um, to try and fill in some of the missing data that's higher up in, like in a wrap, like, um, in bookshelves, commonly, you'll see that where you don't get all the data. Um, or I will drop it down to take a picture a little bit lower. And that is, um, I would say that's really at the discretion of the photographer. Um, I have had good, I've had good results keeping it with the four and a half feet. Um, but certainly there's nothing wrong. You're not going to mess anything up if you reduce the height of your tripod. Okay. I don't want to mess you up on timing. You mentioned that the camera will time out here and disconnect from your iPad. So Oh, it, it might do that. I think we're okay. So let, yeah, let's move on to our next scan. Um, so what we're going to do now is we're, what I'd like to try and illustrate that we're going to move up these stairs here. And um, what we have is I've already scanned close to the stairs. Uh, but there, we're in a in a home right now that actually has a stage um, in their home. In their home, so you're not going to commonly run into this, but it is common for you to have something that's uh, referred to as like a a subparterre or a half flight or a sunken living room. And so this space here, because the elevation is only uh, maybe two and a half, three feet. Um, I don't need to mark this as a new floor. So I just wanted to state um, initially that this is not a second floor, even though it is a higher level than this base floor that I'm on here. Okay. okay. Um, so I've already scanned this close to the stairs. And so I'm going to attempt right now to move up the stairs with my camera. And this is a very short, small, little uh, funky kind of stairway here. Um, so I'm going to place one scan just right at the base of the stairs here because I want to make sure that I am connecting things properly so that when we navigate to this space um, that we're able to um, that we're able to have exactly the kind of navigation that we need. So let's see here. So I had scanned originally right here. I don't know if it's hard to see with the reflection. Uh, right? we, can, we can see it. Yep. Yeah, I'd scanned right there, which is kind of in front of the stairs. But I'm just going to add another one for safe measure just right at the base of those stairs. Um, and my hope is that by doing that, um, that then, you know, maybe it's just for good luck. But starting on the second day, starting fresh, I just want to make sure that the, that the data is still reading it. And one of the things that changes, especially if you're going from one day to the next is the lighting. And so um, you, you may have to rescan areas that you already scanned thoroughly before just because um, the lighting has changed. Um, so anyway, it's, it's aligning now. Will the, the light change affect the, um, the, the, the scans from connecting or just change because you want all your visuals to look the same or both? 
It can be both. And so now we can see that that second scan there, the one that I wanted to put right at the base of the stairs was mm -hmm. successful. Um, the reason why you're going to want to do it um, again in a room absolutely is for continuity to have the lighting look the way you want it to look. But you, you might find that the scan is just going to not take. Um, it, it may lose its place if a large percentage of the room the previous day was filled with sunlight. Um, and if that's the case, um, I would actually rescan that room. I would start outside the room. I would even delete scans in the room um, if it's a small enough space. I would delete the scans. Um, and then I would start over entering that room mm -hmm. once the lighting has changed. Would I duplicate the model before just in case? Yes. I, I, yes. before I delete you, something you would have duplicated it when you left the job the day before anyway so yes you would you would then start working on an either even a third duplicate or you would um you would just work on a separate model and the and the purpose of duplicating the model at the end of the job is one of one of the reasons I do that is because I want to have one copy that is never touched that is just a, a, like an archive copy of things um, and then I also, I also use that um, as like the one that I initially upload and then I can make different kinds of uh, markings and changes um, later to it just to, not, not to it, but to other versions of it. But I leave that one intact because I don't want to accidentally delete something on a, on a model that I'm working with. Does that okay. make sense? Yes. Okay. Um, okay. So now I'm going to go up these stairs and um, th unfortunately we've only got a few little stairs here, but um, basically the strategy on this is a really tiny staircase. So I don't have the advantage of being able to keep the legs um, uh, of the tripod spread out wide, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to, I'm going to bring it in. I'm going to, I'm going to then um, uh, lower the front leg, the back two legs always stay um, like you have two in the back and one in the front as you go up the stairs. Um, and you do that for stability. So you never want to have just one, um, in the back. Okay. So, so we're going to do that. Two legs on the downward side. Yeah. Two legs on the downside. And so these two legs are going to stay in the back. Um, I know that this is a narrow staircase, so I'm going to have to bring it in, right? I bring it in like this, um, which means that my camera goes up a little higher. Um, and I'm going to position it so that I can fit in here. Now, if, the, if this were a large staircase where I had, um, you know, say 15, 16 stairs, then uh, Matterport recommends that you go four stairs at a time. Uh, but, uh, I actually like to look, I like to count and see how many stairs there are before I decide to go three stairs at a time or four stairs at a time, just because I like to evenly space them. So, um, <laughs> okay. So I've dropped down my front tripod leg here just a little bit, and I've decided that I'm going to try to go to the middle stair here because the center of the tripod is actually where, um, it's where the circle will show up in your model. So we have one right here at the base of, this, of these stairs. How do I know that the camera is uh, not on a slant? Or you, does that matter? It totally matters. It totally, totally matters. So um, this one is, of course, slightly tricky. So I can, can have the benefit here of being able to kind of like eyeball it and see. Um, but it doesn't matter, like to the point of it being, you know, it can be supposedly up to 15 degrees different difference. Um, I'm running into another issue that you might run into is that now that I'm going up the stairs, Dan, um, I can see that the stairs, uh, my camera has gotten close to the wall, mm -hmm. right? Yep. But it's pretty much unavoidable. So as much as I said, don't let that happen. Sometimes you just don't have a choice. Um, and so I'm going to come up next to this and um, I can see that, you know, and what I had done before yesterday is I had shown you guys that I use the level on my phone. Okay. So uh, that's in the compass app, as I remember exactly. it's in the compass yesterday. App. Yep. Part and one. I make sure that it's level. So right now it's at negative one degrees, which is not bad. 
So I'm going to leave it there because I'm okay with that for this, um, this going up the stairs. And I can see that actually I'm not really, I'm kind of in between the first stair and the second stair. So I'm going to move it up one. And so I'm going to move this whole thing more like this. I'm going to spread this out a little bit, drop it down. And now I'm really positioned over the stair that I want to be positioned in front of. But what has happened is that my, um, is that my camera isn't level. So I level my camera out one more time. And then I'm going to do something that regular photographers would think is crazy. And I'm just going to raise this up here, right? I'm going to raise up the center. And the reason I'm doing that is because I don't want the experience of the person that is going up these stairs for, is for them to be like at, you know, just at the eyeballing the, the next floor here. That's just not a good user experience. Um, so we're going to, we're going to go back to leveling and we're at negative two now, which is, you know, maybe not the most ideal. Yeah, and now we're at negative one. So we're okay with that. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna scan this because I know it's at negative one. Um, that means it's basically level and it's not gonna fall. And that's your biggest concern on the stairs, Dan, is the instability and walking away from your camera because you're, you're, you're not next to it, you're out of the shot and you don't want anything to happen to it. I'm so. nervous for you. <laughs> Don't be nervous for me. <laughs> yeah. Right. Don't be nervous for me. I'm okay. But okay. yeah, it's scary. We're just fine. Okay. Um, and then the next move for us at this point is for us to move the camera up to that next landing. Um, and then to just set it back up like we would have set it up regularly as we were starting our regular scans. Okay. And if you weren't doing this demo uh, for us newbies, you'd be out of the shot. I would totally be out of the shot. I would be probably hiding in that little room up there. There's another room off the stage. Okay. So I'd, be, I'd be up there hiding. Okay, what are you do for dinner? Do you want me to pick it up? So. Uh, it's, excuse me, Emily. Uh, Ian had a question for you. Oh, sorry, Ian. Let me come back so I can hear you. Okay. Hi, Ian. Hi, Emily. Hi, Dan. Hey, Ian. Uh, the, the area that you're scanning right now is uh, very similar to what a split level would be in a, in, a, in a house, right? Yeah. So if you're going up to that level of the top step, would that still be part of floor one? Or would you label that, would you do a scan at the top and then do go on to your second scan and label that second scan as floor two and then move the previous scan at the top of the stairs to the floor two or you know um, what it's such a good question and even if you labeled the scan at the top floor two mm -hmm. and even if you put in your own labels the algorithms now that are calculating the floors um, on the pro on the cloud processing side may actually result in those scans ending up on a different floor than you intended for them. Um, and so you would in this situation, because this is really just like a sunken living room um, or like a raised, um, right. a raised stage, this would not, I don't think that this would be calculated by that algorithm as a, Second as, as an floor. additional floor it's not it's just okay. going to calculate it as like one floor and i remember that because my i ran into a scan i had a scan once where the realtor was adamant that this was a four-story place <laughs> and i was not <laughs> able to make it uh appear i wasn't able to make it in the model into four levels because matterport read it as three does that make sense yeah yeah Okay, great. Thank you. Yeah, uh, and uh, yeah, Emily, uh, just just for a second, but we're back. Uh, someone's in the background uh, talking, and are we uh, there? Yeah, uh, I'll, we can. I'll, 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 I'll mute this, Dan. Okay. Uh, thanks, Ian. I'm not sure that that's it. I think maybe on Emily's internet connection, uh, she looks a little frozen. 
Emily, do we lose you? So hopefully Emily's uh, connection will, will snap back. Uh, Ian, what I did read in the We Get Around Network forum uh, about floors is that the, the, uh, the, the um, uh, looking at the floor plan uh, on uh, the mini map on the iPad is mm -hmm. simply your reference. It doesn't affect where Matterport's going to put the scans. Uh, it just makes it a little easier for you when you go from floor one to floor two that if uh, you, can, you can imagine you get to a second floor and the scans are stacked on top of each other and then right. you, can't, you can't see them on your mini map. So right. what I read in the We Get Around Network forum is just think about how this scanomatic, this mini map is helpful to you. And so if it was helpful for you for any reason to have that stage be a second level, you could market it as a second level, but it's not going to affect um, in any way um, uh, how Matterport processes the model. Right. So uh, I think we actually lost uh, Emily. Maybe she'll she'll dial back in here. <laughs> so okay. uh, let me see if she's uh, calling me on my phone by chance. Uh, nope. <laughs> um, I know uh, maybe I can ask you this, Dan, is I know Emily mentioned yesterday uh, about marking, when you're marking the windows, you actually make it bigger than the actual size. Do you know why they would do that? Uh, uh, sure. So I'm going to come out of my role as a, a newbie uh, yeah. and, and see if I can answer that question while, sure. while we get uh, Emily back. So you can imagine if you're marking a, a, a window and the purpose of marking the window is so that the infrared dots that are millions of infrared dots a second are going out and millions are being read back, yeah. that you don't want some of the dots that go out the window on this side and this side. So you really want to make sure your trim marking for that window covers the window. It, right. it, you, you could use a window trim tool to simply mark an entire wall. It doesn't, it doesn't matter. You're just simply saying to the, to the, to the camera, you know, don't look beyond this line for any scanning data in, in order to construct the model. Um, okay. it's, uh, it may be, in, in fact, Emily's dropped off. I'm sure she'll drop back, sure she'll drop, come back. should come back in. So you could, um, you could imagine that you might even, it's a, it's a little bit misnomer in terms of these terms to trim mirrors and windows. And maybe we'll ask Emily a little bit more on it, but frankly, you could trim the whole model in windows and in, in, in order to kind of just block all the light. So yeah. I, I give you an example is if I'm on an, an outdoor, let's say a terrace and the terrace has maybe a rail, but then it doesn't have any windows from the top of the rail to the top. Right. I'll, still, I'll still mark that as a window and it'll make for a very nice squared up uh, dollhouse view oh, okay. uh, using the window trim tool to, um, to just, you know, again, a, you know, patio, a terrace, you know, maybe it, there's a ceiling, but it's, right. it's open. There's no window there. So just, oh, okay. because there, just because there's no window there doesn't mean I can't actually mark it with the window tool. Oh, okay. Okay. So I'll give you an example then. I did a, a scan today for one of our condos. Uh, and in the corner of the living room was a glass door, totally glass door going to a balcony so i was able to do a scan in the opposite corner with the glass door closed i then moved the camera closer to the screen to the glass door and i opened the glass door and the scan worked fine no problems no issues with alignment whatsoever so so i i would suggest that in that case you got lucky so <laughs> what, what okay. I, truly uh because yeah. What, what, what I would recommend, and, th and there is a solution that, that Matterport recommends in case you get that problem, but it's kind of like um, if you can deal with it while scanning rather than in post-production, you'll be way better off. So best, okay. pra best practices would be to keep the door, all the doors open that you mm -hmm. want open. If it's not practical that you're, you don't want the front door of the house open, open because you're in the kitchen and you can't see whether somebody's coming in in the house, then you know you can close the door. But I yeah. would say 
when you're within maybe a story and a half, two stories worth of distance, that that's kind of where the camera is going to be seeing data. And so if, if you're in maybe in a big open floor plan, you're all the way at one end and that door is at another end and you want to go through that door, keep that door open, you know, go, mm-hmm. by, go by lots of door stops and, and make sure that when you do the, the walkthrough of your space that you can actually, you know, put these door stops, keep the doors open uh, right. and um, so that you're not taking the chance that you've scanned, now you're going to open the glass door, scan on the other side, and come back out. Because it is possible to create a, um, a barrier that you can't see. It creates in the mesh view that you can't see uh, something that blocks your ability to, to walk in. Uh, oh, okay. okay. The, the, the tip for if you ended up in that circumstance is how would you deal with the fact that you can't walk in or out one way or the other is it's it, Matterport calls it a sandwich and you take the window trim tool and you, you mark one side of the window and the other side of the window and you have your trim markings face inwards, not outwards. Oh, okay. And in so theory, facing each other. Yeah. So in theory, that's going to take the mesh out of the environment. It's not perfect. It's a workaround. Uh, um, okay. You'll be, you'll be really depressed if you go out to a location, <laughs> you scan it, and you can't do that in post production because n- now you're going to either have to say, right. to your, you know, to your client, uh, um, are, are you a, a real estate agent or broker or, or, or these clients that you're scanning? Uh, I'm a listing, uh, licensed listing coordinator. So, yeah, we're scanning for our clients, our owners of the condo. Okay, so you'd be really depressed if you had to go back to the owner of the condo or to your the, the people in, within your organization you're doing the scan for to say, so sorry, I know we scanned outside on the patio. I think em- Emily's just joined us. Let me just bring her back okay. into, the, in, into the discussion here. Uh, let's just take me a second. Um, uh, I'm looking for Emily. I can see, it's interesting. I can see that she's back in and I can't seem to bring her back. Uh, Let's see, all panelists, got an attendee. Uh, So it's very unusual. I can't promote her. I wonder if she came in on the same link. So let's just try again. So I'm going to imagine that Emily is listening to us now trying to figure this out. Uh, and let's try, let's try uh, removing one from our chat. Thank you for offering to do that. And then I'm going to try and add Emily again. And I am struggling with trying to add her back. Hmm. It's not letting me add her back. Yeah, I'll, I'll mute myself here, Dan, uh, and uh, let you work with that. Um, let's just, we'll try that if you don't mind. I'll 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 take you off as well, sure. and uh, just we'll, we'll put okay. you in the virtual audience here. Uh, let's see. Uh, just take me a moment. Uh, okay. And so it's just me. Em- Emily, if you're listening in, please uh, try uh, uh, um, reconnecting. I think I see that maybe you've just, yep, there you go. And so. Hi, Dan. Hey, Emily, we got you back. We, we lost a couple of our virtual studio audience I'm people. So, sorry. so that that's okay. Let me just finish the thought for the for the guest that was asking a question. Please. So um, that, 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 uh, you really do want to keep the Ian. You really do want to keep up. Oh, he's he's back. Let me let me see if I can bring him back into the discussion here. Just take me a second. I apologize if it goes out again. Also, that that's okay. I and uh, you know. Oh, and let me. I uh, sorry. I wanted to remove one that asked to be removed from the screen. There. Okay. So Ian, I, I think we were just just finishing up that thought was uh, s- scanning on the the terrace to keep the doors open. Um, the challenge is if you can't do that sandwich, 
of removing the data, then you're going to, you may be caught in the position where you might be able to walk outside and you can't walk back inside, or you may be able to walk inside, but you can't walk back outside. So much better if you can just keep the doors open. Uh, um, you'll just have, you'll have a way better experience. And uh, I, I think the other thing I would add, Ian, is let's say there were three panes of glass. Sometimes I think there's a pane of glass here, a pane of glass here, maybe a sliding pane, is that I would mark the two side panes as windows on the inside and on the outside. And that way you, you will not allow people to walk through the windows because you don't, in real life, you don't walk through windows. So if you mark the windows on the two sides, um, not only will it be, you know, you'll make sure the camera doesn't, you know, fail on you because the glass could be a challenge, but it'll also make for a nice dollhouse view on the front and the back side of the glass. Is that, are you with me on that? Yeah, I am. Thank you, Dan. Th yeah. Thank you, Ian. I'll, uh, right. I'll try that. Okay, good. So Emily, I'm I'm going to go back into my role is I've just got my uh, camera for the first time and I'm so excited to be learning about uh, scanning. And I, I think where you left off is you were talking about the camera height and going up maybe some narrow stairs and what that walking experience would feel like. Can you guys hear me? Okay? No, <laughs> just just a little, little your, your, uh, your lavalier mic maybe just needs to be a little adjusted. Is it working now? Perfect. Thank you. Let me just double check my mic and make sure that. Um, yeah, it, it's it absolutely perfect sound. right now. OK. So um, your, your level sounds great. And we will be able to hear Can you. you hear back now? Yeah, though you just froze. <laughs> yeah, perfect. Yeah, except for that part, we're good, right? Yes. OK. So, um, okay, so you can hear me again as I walk away from the camera. Okay, um, so, okay, so right. So we were talking about the height. Um, as somebody's going up the stairs, we are changing the tripod legs, which I try to minimize uh, in all of my scanning. I try to do the stairs last. I don't do the stairs first if I don't have to. I'll really just scan that whole floor before trying to attempt the stairs because it's much easier if you don't have to continuously or multiple times adjust the height of the tripod legs. Um, so now what we're going to do is we're going to move this tripod all the way up to the landing. And uh, so I already know that I have to really, I always hold my camera, um, you know, in terms of best practices, I want to hold that camera in my hand when I know that I've got one leg that's unstable and keep a hand on the grip here because I don't want it to uh, potentially, you know, slide off or fall. And this is a really good, um, or this is a chance in your scanning when this is more likely to happen because you've got instability in the tripod. So, um, so now I've gone back down and I'm just going to check my height and make sure that I'm at that same height that I was at before, um, which is great. I'm still at the four and a half. And then I'm going to place this scan, Dan, uh, right kind of at that point where the, um, so that the circle is going to end up um, right at the top of the stairs. I want it to kind of be in the center so that when somebody's coming up the stairs, that, that, the, um, that the circles will be visible and that you'll see that there's that scan at the top of the next level. So I actually place that, rather than placing it further away from the last stair, I kind of place it a little bit closer. Not so that it's like dangerously gonna fall down the stairs, but I just wanna make sure that I have um, a good spot for navigation. Does that make sense? Yeah, though it looks tilted to me. Does it look tilted to you? Yeah. Okay, we might have to check the. Uh, we might have to just check the. Uh, I might be tilted. You're probably right about that. Let's double check it. It could be that the legs are not evenly spaced out, but that the camera itself. Yeah, the the legs don't look evenly spaced out. Yeah, you're right. Totally. Okay, so we'll bring that back. And um, if you have that level on your clamp, this is a, a moment where it would be really nice to have um, the level on your clamp. 
uh, or on your actual ARCA clamp because then you could spin the camera around and look at it and that spirit level is going to give you um, a nice, you know, very accurate, um, very accurate number. Right. And so this one, I, I kind of just know from having done it and worked with this tripod um, so much, like how much I need to, uh, how much I need to um, uh, straighten it out. So that's good. That's, that's level now, even though the legs are not, um, you know, they're spread out a little bit uh, unequally here. It's still okay. It should still scan level. Okay. And then so while you're good now. Yeah. And then what, why, once you start scanning, I have a question for you. Okay. All right. So I'm going to come back over here and do that scan. And all right. So we're connected again. Okay. And so, so my, my question was, um, I noticed when you were up on stage using your iPhone to, to uh, the compass app to check the, the level that, you, that your iPad was dangling off the edge of uh, your wrist there. What, what's the magic that's going on there? <laughs> the magic is the native union um, iPod, iPad case that uh, you can get at the, um, I guess on your website, Dan, you've got a list of all the gear that you can get. And so you're going to want to go and get this Native Union life-saving um, iPad case. And then I have um, a sticker on here, just like property of my company, um, just in case I leave it somewhere. And I actually have that on the outside of my gear. And I believe I put one on the inside as well on the iPad because I want to make sure that, you know, you can't do much about theft, but you got to keep your, uh, um, you got to keep your gear uh, looking, uh, you know, at least so that if somebody sees it, they go, oh, I better call her and give it back to her. Yeah. And I, I'm still fascinated about that. So you, you had your hand through it, but it looked like it also twisted. And then there was some kind of case yes. cover. What are all the different ways you use that? Oh, well, I, I literally just wear it. Like I wear it as a bracelet. I let it fall down on my wrist. And um, some people like to wear them around their necks. There's some pouches. Um, I've, also, I've also talked to other MSPs that really like wearing it that style. And, uh, but for me, this is really just the most comfortable. And then this twists and it can be used as a stand. Um, and then it has a roller cover protector, just like the ones that they sell at the Apple store, but at the Apple store, they don't come with this. This is the most important piece. And what's the strap that's underneath that? It looks like maybe a couple it's fingers. A second, go, it's yep. a second hand strap. Okay. Cool. And so you would use that if you're, you know, if you're really just need more stability, I would imagine. I, I tend to just use the wrist one um, mm -hmm. because it's just, you know, I hold it like that. Okay. Uh, I'm actually in a, um, let's see, we call that a, a, a wrist strap of some sort. But I, I'm going to ask that question in the We Get Around Network forum. Uh, what, uh, uh, what solutions are people using uh, other than holding the um, uh, iPad without any kind of uh, cover strap or totally. et cetera. Totally. But, you know, I think I it's like a thousand dollar device. I just yeah. feel like scanning for eight hours, maybe maybe that's not such a good idea to just be holding onto it and risk dropping it at every second. No, Especially you shouldn't. You absolutely need a case for it. And I have an iPad mini um, that uh, doesn't have a case. And I noticed that when I scan with that, um, I have more neck strain, um, I'm more, I also then put it down somewhere. And if I'm around the corner and I put it down flat, um, I'm more likely to overlook it when I'm looking for it later. But if it's standing up, I'll find it. Cause you know, when you're on long shoots, you can sometimes just sort of get lost and, and forget where did I leave my iPad? Um, and so let's see. So let's see if this worked and that did work. So scan 14 was great. It was at the top of the stairs. And um, we made it up to that um, to that area there on the uh, on the um, stage. Mm -hmm. okay. And the stage has actually filled in. You can see that the stage. This is the stage here. The stage has completely filled in now, even just from that one scan. So I wasn't able to show you what I really wanted to show you. We didn't talk about um, last time, but I could demonstrate it um, with 
I started a new model right now, but I would like to demonstrate for you the radius of your scans. Um, because I think it's something people don't really think about, but um, you know, it is, it's interesting to know what the radius of your scans are. Okay. Um, but, um, but we won't, we won't do it here. So, um, in I, this, I, I feel like I want to see a scan done in the middle of the stage because that, that's where I'm going to feel like, you know, yes. Okay. I'm, I'll go I'm do gonna, that. I'm going to go sing, perform. Yes. Because, okay. it, because every house comes with a stage. Every, I know. Right. <laughs> but this house does, which is really awesome. And, um, so we're going to pick it up. We're going to move it in here. Now you uh, you have a bright light coming in there. How do, does that affect in any way uh, scanning? And if so, what what is it that you're doing? Well, right here I have a light that I can turn off and on, and then here I have a window where we do have some indirect light, uh, but it is not. And I can tell my I can tell right now that my camera is really off. It's really, um, you know, it's not level. It needs to be fixed. That's probably pretty close to level. And so once you get good at scanning, you don't, and good at leveling, um, you don't need, I think you can eyeball it amazingly well, but uh, it's always good to check your levels. So, so we're, for the sake of, you know, assuming that if I, if I was really worried about it, I would go back down and get my level, but this looks really good to me. Um, then I, I'm going to take a scan here in the middle of the stage. Okay. And we are, we are right in front of a window. In fact, one of the things that's happening, Dan, is that there's a shadow of the Matterport being cast against the wall behind it from ambient light coming from a different area. So not from behind it, but there's ambient light coming from a side room over here. Um, and I don't think it's enough to affect the scan right now, but if it were really stronger light that was showing up on the floor, then you would definitely, um, you would definitely have a problem um, with, that you would need to navigate around with your camera. So. So if you all are uh, tuning in, uh, you're watching WGAN TV live at five. I'm Dan Smigrod, founder of the We Get Around Network Forum. Our guest today, uh, our guest instructor, uh, Emily um, uh, Ullman is the founder of Hopscotch Interactive uh, based in San Francisco, also is an MSP, not only in San Francisco in the, the Long Beach area, but in Berlin as well with uh, one, one of her colleagues. And, uh, and in my role today, I've, uh, I'm a newbie and I've just gotten my Matterport camera all excited and uh, Emily is giving a uh, Matterport scanning for newbies uh, uh, class. And uh, those, so I'm asking those questions in your behalf of, gee, I just got a Matterport camera, I need help. And we, have, we do have some in the virtual studio audience. Ian is, had asked the question earlier, so great. Ian, if you got questions, feel free to jump in. Yeah, uh, Dan, thank you. Uh, Emily, you you were mentioning the uh, the bright light or the sunshine. If that was a sort of an extra large picture window, uh, the light just happened to be coming in and sh making a huge uh, sunspot on the floor. Would it be better off uh, to cover that window, close the drapes, uh, even though it may make the room a little darker? Well. Um... If it's a picture window and it's a really important uh, selling feature for that mm -hmm. space right. and the realtor is expecting it for it to be in the shot, um, what I would do is I would probably scan it while I'm in that room and then I would come back and try and add a scan later um, okay. with, once the light has changed. Yeah. Uh, because, you know, you're going to have a couple of different issues. If you if you have the camera's lenses being hit with sunlight in any of your turns, that scan is probably not going to work out for you. And okay. so um, what, that's one of the things that I look, look for is that when I'm placing my camera, I look, I spin the camera around 
and when I'm close to light, because I'm there's a lot of sunshine out here in California, we we run into this issue a lot. And um, I will spin my camera around and make sure that there's no direct light hitting the lens at any point in that rotation. Um, and if it is, it's not worth scanning. Okay. And the reason I'm I'm asking this is I'm in Ottawa, Does that Canada. Make sense? So, oh, it makes sense. Yes, I'm in Ottawa, Canada. So we're coming up to the the winter equinox on December 21st, and of course the sun is very low in the in the sky, uh, and we have some very bright days. And plus, it gets dark that much quicker. So we're trying to do more of our shots in the daytime, but the the sunshine is causing some issues in that. You know, it's causes a lot of shadows and it's the large sunspots on the floor. So, OK, I'll see. Uh, I, I want to follow up on Ian's comment there, Emily. Um, even if the, the light is not in the eye of the camera, but there's bright light cast on the yeah. floor. Is that a problem? If so, why? It's not always a problem. It can be a problem. Um, one of the ways that I look at the light and I try to explain it to people is that the light is like a giant eraser, okay? And so if you imagine that wherever you see that light, that the equivalent um, of that on your map is gonna be black because you cannot have data when the infrared laser in your uh, infrared scanner in your Matterport camera is being interfered with, right? And that interference in the form of those ultraviolet rays um, is really what is happening. And it's interfering with the infrared and it's, and it's just erasing it. It's just like a big eraser. So you, so you won't have the data there and it can do things like if you scanned and it worked and you're like, awesome, it worked over a spot that's very sunny, once you actually um, go in and process that model, you may not even be able to navigate to that spot. Um, you may have other issues like jagged uh, mesh. And, and so the mesh is not, it, it doesn't look nice. You have really strange artifacts as you're going through those spaces. Um, and so it's just not, um, you just need to avoid it. And now the question of, do I draw the, the, the shades? I never like to do that if I don't have to, like, I try to keep all the windows open. I really try to make sure that I'm starting, I'm paying attention to where the sun is, um, in the morning or in the evening and to try and scan. If you're especially doing a large scan, scan the building appropriately so that you have the least amount of light, um, directly coming in. And Emily, I, th I believe I read in the We Get Around Network forum a post by uh, at John J, the letter J, John J, that if we do have that bright light and it creates a black spot, and let's say we're in a two-story house and there's a black spot, that when I'm walking, I might actually fall through the black spot and end up on the first floor. That's absolutely correct. Yeah. And that can happen not only with the... Um, this happens also, Dan, I believe on the, in the, if you're outside and you're like, it's, it's uh, cloudy. So I'm going to try to attempt to scan on a patio. And so you try to attempt to scan on a patio. And the next thing you know, the wall has been um, like a big wall has been cut out because of the sun. And so in the, in the dollhouse, what you'll see, it's really weird, but you'll see, um, if you're standing in that courtyard or on the patio, you can, you won't see the full wall in the dollhouse. You'll look through into the building because that's just not there. That wall's just not there. Um, and so you can try to fix it by um, treating that wall like a, like a window uh, in your markings. And so you can draw a window um, could you, I, yeah. I, I know I'll probably mess up your timing with your camera type no, okay. timing now, but you, you, you mentioned markings and trimmings, but we actually haven't looked at markings no, and trimmings today. Maybe, maybe you could take us through the, the, sure. the, the different things that you can do on your iPad while doing your scanning. Exactly. Okay. So what I'm going to do is maybe I will turn, cause I'm not, I think I don't need to scan too much more right now, unless you'd like me to go outside and try and do a 360 really quickly. I could do that. Um, but let me just try and set this down so that it's a little bit easier to hold and less um, less glare. 
Um, I don't know if this will work. Is that working? Yes, we can see floor one, for example. Yep. Okay, great. So, um, so this is my model, and um, in this room, I. I haven't done any trimming. So there's just nothing, no trim in this room at all. And here we have a window um, that's small, but it, it can result in, even though it's, it's up off the ground, it can result in there being- um, Emily, I'm sorry, we can't see your hand. Are you pointing to the window that was above the stage? That on the stage? Yeah, the window, yeah. the one above the stage. So this okay. one right here. Okay, yeah. sorry. So this one right here, um, so you still want to mark that even though it's not like a floor to ceiling window. Um, the ones that you, um, the ones that you're going to run into trouble with marking um, are like the second story clerestory windows. Um, you really can't do anything to, to mark those because as soon as you put that window marking, especially if it's like, um, you can do it on the, on the first floor, mark the windows, but on the second floor, it'll just make a wall all the way down to the bottom of the scan, if that makes sense. So, um, leave the clerestory windows alone. But here, it's on. A, it's still on my main floor, so I can add the um, the window marking here. So I'm going to go to window, which I think you guys can see. Can you yes. see it? Okay. Let me know. Okay. Let me know if this. Yes. We. Um, yes. Maybe that's better. And uh, so then I'm going to just drag my uh, finger across, and I'm going to place this window marking right there. Um, and, and it looks bigger than the window. Is that okay? That's totally okay. okay. You're, it's totally fine if it's bigger than the window and it's okay for it to be just sort of slightly in front of the window. Um, but try to line it up as much as you can with the wall because there's spray here, which is the part where it gets jagged. It's a little bit hard. I find it very hard to tell precisely the best place to put it, but I try to put it where I can see that there aren't very many of these black dots that are starting to um, sort of deteriorate into the outside because that's really just a wall. That's, that's really just a wall. So, so, so I put my window here. So I could imagine if I process that model and I had a black hole in where I would expect the window, then I would imagine that I'd want to come back and move that trim tool uh, uh, closer to the inside of the house uh, and reprocess the model so that my dollhouse would look better? Yes, you do want to do that. If your window is too far away, then it will not, it will just be black. It'll just be, if your window marking is too far away, it'll just be black and it won't pick up the texture is what we call it. It won't pick up the texture from the, um, uh, from, you know, the scan. And so that's what you want to have is that this is drawing that line here to, to add data, to fill, make a hard wall there. So we have nothing behind it uh, spraying out like these artifacts um, that spray that are, it's digital, you know, 3D data that's, that's going out into the back. Um, and then it also, it'll draw that line. So it looks really clean in the, in the um, dollhouse. And I, I would imagine that maybe two other things are happening there. If I didn't put that trim tool, I may get that spraying effect of data in my dollhouse view. Yeah, you'll get a, like a little flag or something that's kind of fla you know flapping out behind your model. And, and that's a telltale sign that somebody didn't uh, do the window marking or put in a trim marking on the perimeter of a building. And I would also imagine if I didn't use the window trim tool right there, that the window glass would be black, perhaps, rather than actually what I would expect in the dollhouse view. That's exactly right, Dan. It would be black. And that's what we, we don't want that. And now here... I, Emily, I read the We Get Around Network forum all the time. So I, I though I've just gotten my Matterport camera, I, I feel like, <laughs> cause I, I've, gosh, I think in the three years that... It, there's been 40,000 posts among something like 5,000 topics. So I, I do try to read everything, um, uh, even though I just got my camera trying to figure this out. So. I know. It's so hard, Dan. We always have to, even, even people who've been doing it for two, three years, um, like yourself, um, you know, I still feel like we have uh, much to learn and that we can't anticipate the way that the camera will behave in every situation, but we can definitely give ourselves um, some advantages. Um, now, if I wanted to um, have a, 
if I wanted to do, for instance, that same thing here, Dan, so this is an interior space that I'm not going to use. The client doesn't want me to, to photograph in this um, kitchenette here. Mm -hmm. Okay. So how I would deal with that situation, if I still want to show that there's a door there um, in my model, I can also put a window marking here, even though it's not a window. Because if I do that, instead of it being black, it'll show um, that the door is there and it's open, but it'll show in the model that there is something, you know, that that texture will be picked up. So that's a nice technique, um, and, but I would still need to add, right? I would still need to add this area that I don't want in there. The, um, so that one, you gotta be careful because it'll cut it out. But here, I'm gonna remove everything on this side of it, right? Like, I don't want that. And this part, um, because it's kind of got a, a notch there, um, what I would probably do is I would put the remove tool um, all the way around, even tiny. I would. I yeah. Would now I'm, to I'm totally confused because I would have expected on the remove thing, the arrows would have faced out of the area yes. that I don't want. Okay. There you go. You there just, it goes. You, you flip that. And now you're going to put it. the. You're going to put a window where the door is. So I, yep. I guess it says just because the trim tool says window doesn't mean I can't use it in, in creative ways. You can use it in creative ways. And this will mean that your dollhouse ends up looking really, really nice because you're going to still be able to see that the door is there and um, and it'll it'll look complete rather than looking like there's missing um, missing information. So, you know, I would probably put um, I think you guys can still see this. I would yes. probably. But, you know, I would then continue with the remove over here. I put a little, maybe a little bit of trim down here if I needed to. And this one, this I'm not sure about. Sometimes, Dan, I feel like if I put it, if it's overlapping at all, it could look, it could end up looking kind of weird there um, when it processes. So this would be a situation where I might play with it and I might do, I might upload one version where I've got it cut out in the entire notch. And then I might just do one version and, and I might do a, another version where, um, where I have it, you know, with, with just removing this way and removing that way. Does that make sense? Yes. So I think just to be clear, if we didn't mark the door as a window and just marked it with the trim tool. Right. Like by in, deleting this. Yeah. In the dollhouse, it's likely that the, where the door is would just be a black hole. It would be a black hole. Exactly. And if we left it in without doing any trimming here at all and not removing anything where it's started to pick up data on the floor, that would show up as spray. That would show up as um, an art, as a digital artifact of an area that we actually don't want to have in our, in our final model. We're okay with the, we're okay with the client seeing that there's another room there um, because there's a door, but we don't want to, we don't want to have this actually show up in our model. You'll see this often like with, um, you know, maybe like garages or things like that, um, where, you know, there'll be a window that goes into a garage from a, a laundry room. And so we're going to mark a window on that laundry, you know, laundry room, but then we want to make sure that it doesn't bleed into the garage area. So uh, was there a reason the client didn't want the, that kitchenette area scanned? Um, no, not really. Uh, just, uh, you know, it's, uh, I think just for demonstration purposes, uh, you know, I want to show you guys where the, um, you know, where we can use the trim tool. Yeah, I, I guess what I was wondering is, let, let's say that was a garage and the client didn't want to pay for the scans for, for the size of the garage or whatever, uh -huh. but yeah. it would really make the dollhouse look way better. I, I, I guess you could still scan the garage and then hide the scans in workshop so that the dollhouse uh -huh. would look complete with the garage, even though you weren't allowing someone to walk into maybe the messy kitchenette or the messy garage. And Absolutely. perhaps that, that was the real reason the client didn't want that space. Oh in. no, that's, it's, it's here it's empty, so it's no big deal. Um, but yes, oftentimes it will look much better if the garage has been scanned because then you have a more complete floor plan. So, you know, my tendency is to want to uh, make sure that we've scanned all of the, all of the surface areas that we can mm -hmm. um and i see some other tools there do you want to take us through the other things that you sure, can Sure, yeah. absolutely so uh, <clears throat> in 
in this room, unfortunately, I don't have a mirror. Um, but if I did have a mirror, um, let's say that this is a mirror, just for argument's sake, I would I would basically um, use this um, tool here to show where the front. Can you all see that? Yes. Okay. So w to do the front of the mirror, and the reason why I'm doing that is that the f and the mirror is the tool at the top. It's actually they say it's the most important tool, and the reason that it's the most important tool in their minds is because it's the one that's the most likely to cause alignment when scanning. And so, if you are, for instance, getting alignment errors while you're on your scan, and you haven't done any of the mark features what you should check is to make sure that you're not getting reflection on um on a mirror because you have lots and lots of um, mirrored uh, mirrored spaces i could show you guys um in another scan that i just did where that was something that came up <coughs> um, excuse me well i i think again reading in the we get around network forum there was a member that was scanning a grocery store and uh and i i i guess the glass uh, from the yeah. freezer case actually yeah. acted as a mirror. And so I think the solution there was rather than marketing as a, a window glass, she marked it as a mirror and that seemed to solve the problem. It does solve the problem. And it's, that's, I've done the exact same thing when like all of a sudden I upload a model and then the windows along the outside of a building, one of the windows just showed up black in the, um, in the in the processed model and I, I was like why is this window doing this i uploaded i re-uploaded it or reprocessed it three times and it kept showing up black and it was everything was right and then i said you know what i'm just going to mark it as a mirror and maybe that's what's going on and that completely fixed it so the this is that moment where um yeah absolutely having multiple versions and then processing them and seeing which is the best version is is really the way to go um and so should we show people how to do that how to make a duplicate dan sure okay so let me see if you guys can see here i'm going to go back up to this area here and um we're going to select this model so right here is you know we can we can uh this is the one that we're working on and we're just going to make a duplicate by pressing d duplicate there and then uh, we've now made a duplicate that says copy okay so it was that easy and you can see that there were a few other options there edit job edit info duplicate and upload so this is the newer version of the of the capture app that they've just released so it has a little bit more um yeah it has that so um okay so um here we go. Uh, we've got, we're back into our model. So is there anything else that I could sure. show you guys here? Um, I, 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 I know we talked about that the stage was not a second floor, but let, let's say it was, and we wanted to mark that as another floor. How do we, can we move that scan to another floor? Create yes, another we floor? can. First, we need to go and add a new floor. So we go, did everybody see where I did that? Went a little fast for me. Okay, I went a little fast. Sorry. Let me let's go again. So down here we have the can't see. Can't see. Okay, now I can see. Ah, okay. perfect. Okay. So we have our floor one here, and we're going to now can you see? And I need to tilt it back up again. Yep. Thank you. Okay. Okay. We have floor one. All right. And then we're gonna add a floor, add new floor here. And it already knows that it's going to be the floor too. So you can just say, okay, create. Because even if you named it something else here, I don't, I think that you still have to change that in the workshop. Um, so you create your new floor and there's no scans on this floor. Um, so we're going to go back um, and, and now we're still in floor two. Here, I'll back this up a little bit. It's a little easier. See? And then back to floor two and... Um, Oh, back to floor one. And now we're going to move. Let's say we, we think that uh, scans 15, 14, and 13 from those stairs should be on the other floor. So what we're going to do is um, we're going to, let's see, go back here, go back to the scan. And we want to move that to uh, move it to a floor. So we're going to move it to this floor here. And now you can see it just moved. Now it's gone. But it went here it went to that second floor. 
Okay, and that this is great because since there's just one scan here, um, you can see that it has um, this uh, uh, sort of radius around the scan, which is which is as it starts to de degrade as it goes out. That's where we lose the point cloud. We're losing the, the dots. Um, and that's where the camera's reach uh, reduces uh, greatly. So is that going to make a second floor in the dollhouse? Well, no, I don't think it's going to. I think that this is one of those cases because it's a short distance that Matterport will process it and will we'll process it. And it's only going to show up as one floor because there's only a few feet difference. Um, so and if that if that's what happens, there's nothing you can do about it. The only thing you can do is like I think I hope I didn't cut out last time when I was explaining it, but um, you know I had a realtor that had a she insisted she had a four story house, but really Matterport only saw it as a three story house because one was like a half story. Um, and so in that case, um, I went in and with using uh, the URL parameters, which is you know, we have various ways we can display our models once we give clients a link. Um, I was able to change it so that the floors didn't show up. Um, and that really helped us with, um, with that, that situation with the client. Um, but we won't, I won't illustrate that now. But if I wanted to go back and I'm going to go to floor one. Yeah, I did have a follow up on the oh, floors. Wait, go ahead. Sorry, sorry. So um, I could imagine, let's say, in a three story house, and earlier uh, you described that your preference is to start on the lowest floor and work your way up. But I, I could imagine in a three story house, um, if you show up at 7 a.m., there's maybe still some kids that are sleeping on the first floor, the ground floor, and then I'm forced to really start on the main level. Uh, is that going to matter that I? You know, wait for the kids to wake up, get dressed, clean that, clean up that floor before I, so I'm kind of doing it out of order. If I'm trying to scan from the basement to the main level to the second level of the house, I guess three levels. Uh-huh. No, uh -huh. it shouldn't, it should still be okay. Um, what you need to, to look at is not, uh, what you can't do is you can't just start scanning on another floor, like completely, um, with no connection to the previous scans, right? Okay. Like so, that, I, so I, I get that, that I have to have the, the dots connected. I can't yeah. go anywhere that, where the dots aren't connected. Um, but I would imagine that if I shot the first floor, if I shot what I think is the second floor first, boy, uh -huh. it's really, really confusing. Mm -hmm. I shot, mm -hmm. uh, so I'm- Like the middle if, floor. Uh, yeah, if I shot the middle floor first uh, and I, I mm -hmm. labeled it, I could label it middle floor, I guess. And then when I get mm -hmm. to the first floor, I could label that, I suppose, basement. And then when mm -hmm. I do the second level of the house, which is really the third floor, that I could label that the second floor. So in my mind, I know basement, main level, and second floor. Mm -hmm. But I would imagine that Matterport is just going to call that floor one, two, three and ignore the what, what I've labeled it. Exactly. And so once it processes, it should still be okay. But when you go into the workshop, you're going to want to change the names of those floors. Like for instance, in Europe, um, you'll have lots of people, there's like a lot of like negative floors too, like minus two, minus one, zero. Um, and so you're going to want to change that so that it, it, it actually matches up to the correct um, uh, floor titling. So does um, Matterport allow for negative floor numberings when the 3D showcase is displayed, when the Matterport Spaces 3D tour is displayed? Absolutely. They... It does. You can name it anything you want. You could call it uh, anything you wanted, but you can't change You can't really do it here. You can't do it in um, the capture app. You do it in the workshop. Okay. Um, uh, and were there other things on the iPad I, that we can do? I noticed, let's see, we can do the, the trim, yes. mir mirror. You, you can do that. And the other thing that you can do is when you edit scans. So this is another one is that um, I'm back to my main um, scanning home page here. Mm -hmm. If I go to edit scans, Dan, and I want to edit multiple scans at a time. So I just tapped on two scans. Did you see that? Yes. And I'm going to actually, I'm going to move both of these. So we could actually move like a bunch. Like if we selected more, we can move them or delete them in bulk. And then you would move those to floor two. 
um, so that they would join that other scan. And now we have these all on that floor. Mm -hmm. that make, is that? Yeah. Was, was there something else I can do on the iPad? Uh, I saw trimming, floors, upload. Upload, trim, windows, mirrors, floor. Um, you can do the 360. Is that yeah. the thing? Yeah. Um, why don't we do that in, inside so we don't lose you on the internet connection and Absolutely. we'll Absolutely. pretend that we're outside and try to see what that is. Exactly. Okay. <clears throat> so maybe um, what I will do is I'm, I'll leave my computer here, but I'll put the camera, I'll put the camera somewhere else. Okay. We, all we see is your iPad. What's that? We don't see you. We see your iPad. Okay. Let me, uh, here, we'll do this. I'll try not to. I'll try not to lose you guys. Okay. Okay. So, okay, I'm back. Hi. All right. Let me move the camera. And uh, Emily, while you're doing that, <clears throat> a member of our virtual studio audience has, has asked um, uh, for how a rescan is handled. Um, but that said, I don't really understand the question. So uh, if you could just uh, type off to the side there, uh, Ted, and maybe help me understand. Um, uh, maybe you could ask ask the question a different way about um, handling a rescan, because I don't know if that's referring to one scan or uh, I'm I'm a little bit confused. So uh, okay, we're back to you, Emily. Okay. So I've just moved the camera out of view, but I'm still here so you guys can see me. And so what I do is I'm going to actually hit, um, I've moved over, I've toggled between 360 scan and three, or 3D scan and 360 view. And I'm going to hit capture 360 view here. And my camera is going in the other room, which is more like normal where you're not in the picture. Um, and so in just a minute, we will have- uh, Now I, I thought, I thought both are 360, so I'm a little bit confused the difference between a. a, a yes, yeah, exactly. Yeah. So, what is happening in this spin right now, Dan, is that it's the same as a regular camera turn, with the exception that what is being suppressed right now is that um, infrared scanner. So, the scanner in the camera, um, that data is being suppressed and is not being added to the model and which is what allows us to take these 360 images inside, outside. Um, and you can add them to your highlight reel, um, but you cannot, and you can add a, a tag, like a matter tag to go to it um, from within 3D, um, but then that you can't add a tag in a 360. So um, they're a little bit, um, they're a little bit tricky, I think, um, and, and I, I keep hoping that we will have more features um, with the 360s that allow us to add tags to them. Um, but because there's no data, there's nothing to anchor um, a matter tag onto right now. Does okay, that make so, sense? Yeah. I, and, and I could imagine that if I just did this 360 view, I got to be really careful to remember that if I want to actually do scans again, I got to toggle back to that. So may, yeah. maybe maybe I should probably do all my 360 views at the end of doing the indoor shoot so that I don't get confused about whether I'm what kind of scan I'm doing. Yeah. And and for if you're at a place, it's a really good point, like do them all at once um, if it's a short shoot or if you're at a longer shoot. Um, you may be able to do things like get a twilight shot with a 360 outside. Um, that's really beautiful and is really helpful for, you know, having some drama in your scan. So this is the 360 that I just took of our little foyer here with the bar. And um, so we've just added this um, 360 to, um, to, the, to the data set, um, but we didn't... Um, we didn't actually um, have that has nothing to do with this uh, 3D model here, other than it's now part of the scan, um, and and it'll be processed and it'll will it will be something we can view in our assets in the workshop later. But otherwise, we can just preview it now, 
and that's it. We can't, we can't do much else with it except for re take more shots if we weren't happy with the way that it looks. Okay, great. Uh, a, a member of our uh, virtual studio audience has uh, uh, asked me to ask this question sure. about um, if you were up on stage and you had that bright light coming in um, and uh, maybe it was even facing exactly the camera or was casting a, a giant uh, white hole on the stage. Yeah. Yes. Um, and you knew you wanted to kind of com complete the stage, even if you created this hole. Mm -hmm. And then maybe at some point you went up to the main level of the house. Now you've come back because you know that the, the light has moved from east to west and it's now not coming through the window anymore. So you don't have the issue of this uh, gob of white space on the ground. Uh, then what? Are you are you just adding a scan? Or are you deleting the scan and then adding a new scan? Um, uh, how are you treating that that additional scan? In um, uh, yeah, um, it's a really great question. So thanks to whoever asked that question. Um, my personal take on it is try to add the scan because if you go back to the stage, the light has moved. Um, you you want to have more data rather than less data. So if by adding the scan, uh, that means there's more data available from the Matterport system to process, like that's going to result in a better scan um, and a better, a better dollhouse. Um, so yeah, so you should scan it again. And if, if it will not align because it was a giant patch of light that now the camera doesn't know what room it's in, um, then you may have to delete a couple scans and redo it. Um, and it's okay to do that. It's okay to delete scans in a small area if you if it means that it'll result in a better overall um, uh, dollhouse or a better overall model. I could imagine from that if that if the stage one was the example, then maybe start rescanning closer it looks like a bar to me that from my perspective it's off to the right it's the stone case oh there yeah there, yeah yeah so maybe i could be scanning from that side where no light has changed and i may have to maybe do three or four scans to get back up on stage yeah of, of where there was a problem and then i would imagine uh in dollhouse view in excuse me in the matterport workshop yes. that I might hide whatever scans were extra. Exactly. Now, I could just even show you in this room right now, since we're in a room that has a giant path of light, a huge streak of light through the space, um, how I would approach this. Um, because I think that this can be really helpful for people um, when, they're, when they're in their scanning mode. So um, you guys can see this right now. Yes. And I, I can't, um, I can't put any curtains on the, on the windows here. There's just absolutely no curtains. There's no way for me to do it. So um, one thing we can test, since this room has already been thoroughly scanned, like we can now put a test, do a test scan and see if it scans right now. Um, and I've placed, the, I've placed the camera to the side of the light. See, it's not in the light. And I'm going to just double check my camera and make sure that there's nothing hitting it. There's no direct light hitting it. And it's, it's iffy. It's iffy. It looks like there is actually some light hitting the front of that camera. So that's really not a good spot for it to be. Um, a better spot for it to be, let's see, if I go probably just a little bit to the side, right? A little bit to the side. And now I'm out. I'm out of that light, that direct light. There's light from the ceiling, but I don't want, what I really don't want is I don't want the sunlight um, because the sunlight behaves differently than just your regular um, fluorescent lights. Um, so let's try scanning this. Let's see if it, if it does what it should do, which it should read where it is, but it might give us, you know, it, it'll probably, here, I'll give you a before and after. Here's what this looks like now. Okay, so mm -hmm. there's a couple of streaks of light there. We can see that there's some markings on the ground. So but that's good. We actually have some places that would show up. The white spots would show up maybe as yeah. black holes in the dollhouse. And now you're going to try and cover that with an extra scan. 
I'm gonna cover it with an extra scan, and then I might be making a hole by also scanning over an area that has light in it. So it's like, fix a problem, create a problem. <laughs> but at the end of the day, what matters is if the mesh has been built. So what matters is that you have the underlying mesh data that has filled in that plane, whatever the plane is. And, um, and that's really the thing that matters. So let's see if this fills in. And look, we're gonna look for a change in the pattern on the floor um, because once the, that scan comes through, which it might not even come through because I'm guessing that if, if we don't have a success here, it's because that big chunk of light on the floor, it's like, where am I? But it worked. So Great. it just it just popped up and you can see that there is new markings of light on the floor right here. But um, but it seems to be it seems to be like, OK, like I don't think it's going to be a big, big problem for this um, for this model. But um, but what I don't want to do, like if I were if I were, you know, scanning this and I and I didn't want to create another problem for myself, what I wouldn't want to do is I wouldn't want to place that camera like where the where the head of the camera is over the light. Like this is not a good spot. Right. Mm -hmm. Like that's like just about the worst spot because you don't want that camera to be right over where the hole is because mm -hmm. if there's if you're trying to put a if you ha if a circle indicates where the um where the scan was taken and there's a hole there you, either you're gonna get like the floating i'm sure you've all seen it you've seen like the floating um scan and you're like why is it floating and it's floating because there's no data on the ground and it's like connecting to data somewhere else in the room. And so it's like a hanging scan. I like that. You're walking like an Egyptian there, I yeah. think. So we, <laughs> right we, we, we need to be showing you what a hanging scan looks like. So, so yeah, I've we had that. Have that song playing or something. Yeah. Steve Martin walk like an Egyptian. Totally. So, um, Ian, please give some thought to some questions. I, I, I would like to say at this point, uh, uh, hey, if you're just tuning in, uh, you're watching WGAN TV live at five. Uh, it's now uh, 6.30 p.m. Eastern Time, Eastern Standard Time on Wednesday, November 29th, 2017. We are live. Uh, I'm Dan Smake-Rod. I'm the founder of the We Get Around Network Forum. Uh, I've been today's newbie uh, for Emily, uh, Emily um, Ullman, from, uh, founder of uh, Hopscotch Interactive, based in San Francisco, also covering Long Beach. Uh, is a Matterport service provider and also through her partner uh, in Berlin. And uh, we do have some members of the virtual studio audience that's here. I wanted to turn back to Ian and, and see if you had some, uh, some questions, Ian. Sure, thanks, Dan. Um, <clears throat> Emily, on the stage, uh, you have the window and you mark the window trim as pointing inside. Yeah. And this goes back to what you were saying, Dan, about giving a better dollhouse effect so you would also put a window trim on the outside, but pointing outside. Is that correct? Um, Dan, I've, I don't do that. Do you do that? That's not no. something I do. No. I, the, I, I, uh, Emily, I I, yeah, uh, uh, Emily, while you were on break, uh, yeah, disappeared break. on us. What I was talking about was a, a sandwich trim tool. But yeah. uh, let, let me see if I can clarify, uh, Ian. Um, in, in this case, with the light from the window, I would put a trim, and I've stepped out of my newbie role. Sure. <laughs> I, I, I would put the, the window trim tool uh, on the inside, slightly inside of the line of where that window is. Right. And it would point inside. Inside, right. And that's what now, I've been doing. Now, that said, um, it would still be possible to take the window trim tool, the window, and mark the entire wall. There isn't any reason that you can't do that, and it may just make it a little bit cleaner. Now, me being a little bit obsessive, I would probably mark the outside wall with the window tool with mm -hmm. it facing in, and then... With the with the regular trim tool, I would mark this the same wall on the outside with the arrow facing out, yeah. 
for trimming. Yeah, okay. Okay. that's true. And w the, one of the reasons that's also nice is that um, a lot of times windows have sills and that could be like a six inches that or so that sticks mm -hmm. out and yeah. the trim tool will clean it up so that your wall just looks flat and straight. And instead of having um, that spray from a window that can kind of look junky, um, if you put the trim tool on the outside of a window marking, um, it'll just clean it up. And you can actually almost layer them on top of each other as long as that trim tool is on the outside. Um, you want to make sure it's on the outside. But if right. the window tool is on the inside or window trimming is on the inside facing in, trim is on the outside facing out, and they can they can be this close to each other and it's okay. Um, but you will, you'll have what Dan says is, which is a cleaner, usually a cleaner model. Um, okay. And I would also just add to that, that putting a window trimming or a window marking and dragging it across a wall, I have noticed that it also sometimes distorts and drags the image, right? So the only reason you wouldn't want to do that is that if you have, um, you know, a, like if you had a sliding glass door or you have an office, like here's, a, here's like the thing where I've noticed it a lot is I have an office room. Like it's, it's like a, um, it's all windows, right. from like 20 feet. Right. And I drag that tool, that window trim tool across a long window. And since it's pulling um, the image, it'll kind of just start to stretch it out and it looks really kind of not so nice. So you may want to take the effort to individually mark the panes as you go along to okay. result in um, not having that distortion in the image um, that it's because it pulls the texture, but then it distorts it a little bit. Um, and so that would be the only um, difference that I would uh, or the only thing I would add to that. And, and, and I, I would say, Emily, that's such a great tip. You know, I, 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 again, I've been scanning through since July of 2014. Uh, I've talked about this episode being uh, um, uh, a guide to, uh, to Matterport scanning for beginners or for newbies. That's something I just learned uh, where I would have marked the entire glass wall with one trim taking a shortcut to do that as opposed to marking each section. So mm -hmm. um, I, I, I love uh, that, you know, that we get around network forum, WGAN TV, uh, um, that, uh, you know, e even if you're a seasoned pro, just listening to other pros in terms of techniques and what they're doing and, and an example of what you're doing, I, yeah. you know, I thank you. Cause I, you know, I've, I'm learning as, you know, as well. And uh, yeah, you know, and I, you know, I, I kind of think Emily, you know, you know we, we we, we both have probably had this feeling is that, oh, you know, okay, I, I, I did my first model. Okay, great. I'm done. I've learned yeah. everything I possibly can. And then I got to, to do, you know, my first 10 models and I go, wow, I'm still learning. And, and you know, now th three plus years later, every time I scan, yeah. there's absolutely some other learning. Mm -hmm. uh, and so, you know, when, when somebody says, you know, oh, well, you know, the camera rotates, that seems so easy, you know, I know. like, like uh, you know, you know, why could you possibly have a forum that has 40,000 posts and 5,000 topics? I said, well, you know, I, I think it's a little like maybe if you're an airplane pilot and you go to school for many years and learn to fly and then you put the plane on autopilot. And I would say, well, yeah, you know, 90% 90, 90 of the time the pilot's flying the plane on autopilot, but, you know, that that landing and taking off or turbulence or something, you, you really need to be, and, and, you know, you, you, you can't, you can't, the, the, the pilot can't step out and go, well, let me go check with some colleagues, you know, yeah. and you may be on a, a scanning project and, you know, something happens and you don't understand why it's not working. Yeah. Uh, you know, that's where becoming a master Matterport scanner really kind of kicks in. And, totally. and then I think that kind of, you know, it leads us to the next question is, you know, Emily, you've been scanning for a long time. What kinds of problems have you experienced? And, uh, and then how did you solve them? 
Yeah. Well, there's some, that's such a good question. So, um, and thanks Dan, because I have learned so much from you and from the We Get Around Network Forum. And I appreciate so much that everybody has shared these challenges that they've run into because um, they are not unique to you, but you may have discovered something that you didn't realize was, was a possible roadblock for somebody when they're out on a job. And I, we talked about it before, but you know, you really, you, the more you know about how the camera works, the less likely you are to have an issue that you can't solve on your own um, when you're out in the field. And um, one issue that I had that I wanted to bring up that is so rare that Matterport um, had not even heard of it um, was that um, I was scanning in a place and my camera would not connect to my iPad in one room in just one room. And uh, so I, can you guys hear me? Yes. I'm, just, I'm making sure that, you, we're, that we have a good connection. Yes, we can hear you. Can you see us? We can see you. You can hear me? Okay. Yes. Yeah, okay, great. The video stopped, but I'll keep going. but we can't hear Great. you. <laughs> so um, what happened was that the, um, the camera didn't connect to the iPad and uh, what was happening, and we didn't realize this, but with that there was um, electromagnetic frequency that was jamming. I think we lost her, Dan. Yeah, I think so. Um, so let, let me see if I can kind of fill in the blanks for, for Emily, because that actually ha has, it's a, it's a rare thing and it has come up. Um, I, I would say uh, uh, in the forum, uh, Paolo Tassolini, uh, at Tassolini um, has uh, experienced this when he, early on when he was scanning in Europe, uh, was the, the Wi-Fi was failing to connect. Uh, and there were other frequencies affecting the, the Wi-Fi, and it just, um, he could not, he literally could not connect the camera to his iPad. And uh, I, th I think he actually tried uh, getting some foil and covering the, the device uh, <laughs> to, to solve, you know, like this, like maybe I can cover something and that will work. But I, I, I believe the way he solved it and, uh, it, and I know he's talked about this at, at length in the We Get Around Network forum, I think it was about two, three years ago, um, he actually stepped out of the space and went outside the building and he reconnected his iPad uh, uh, with the camera and then brought it back into the space. So I would imagine what Emily is describing is when she was in that particular room with all kinds of radio frequencies, et cetera, mm -hmm. that she, what she probably had to do to solve that problem um, was to, to step out of the, the room. Emily, can you hear us now? Are you back? Uh, so we can see you, Emily, we can't hear you, and we see a frozen picture. So she probably uh, had to step out of, uh, you, are you back, Emily? Emily, can you hear us? So live television, it is what it is. Uh, we ho hope for the best. Um, uh, so maybe she'll be back, maybe she won't, maybe she's getting a little bit of a, a delay. Emily? No? So just to yeah. finish that. Can you hear me? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Great. So you 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 weren't able to connect. Uh, what'd you do? Yeah. Exactly. Sorry. So um, so what we realized was that we were having a connectivity issue based on an electromagnetic frequency problem, and this. So try try again, Emily. Can we hear you now? Can you hear us, Emily? So um, I just, uh, so we can see you, Emily. But can you hear us? Yeah, it's breaking up. But yes, I can hear you. Okay. Um, so if if we'll we'll see if we can finish this thought. If not, we'll wrap up and 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 I'll 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 end up saying goodbye for us. But hopefully you'll be able to hang in there. 
no, okay. So uh, we'll we'll finish it up. Ian, I'm going to ask you if you have other questions, and I'll answer your questions. But yeah. so essentially, what she needed to do was step out of the space, reconnect, and then walk back in the space. Yeah. Ian, yeah. if uh, how long have you been scanning? Uh, two weeks. Two weeks. And have you run into any problems yet where you've been scratching uh, your head? Primarily uh, doors and, and narrow spaces and uh, more so doors that have to stay closed in order for another door to be open. And then doing the, you know, closing that door that was open and then opening the door that was closed and the alignment errors that that causes. So what I found is, I think it was John Jay who actually gave me the example of uh, then going hiding around a corner and restarting a section of scans to come in and, you know, the, the open door is now closed, the closed door is now open, and then you can continue on with your scans. And I've done that a couple of times now, and that's worked uh, famously. So, uh, yeah. And, and you, you still made it need to do that that magic trick that Matterport has offered up called the, the trim sandwich. So in, in the event that you do exactly what you did, which is you had two different right. paths, one to go in door one, one to go in door two, but now you, you might have a place where the mesh has gotten in the way. That would be the place where you do that sandwich trick that we talked about uh, while okay. Emily was off the air earlier in order right. to remove the data that's in the door. I did want to say, you know, Ian, when one door opens, when one door closes, another door opens. But yeah. it, it, it turns out, thank heavens for John Jay in the forum, <laughs> exactly. that it actually had a, exactly. a, a solution for that uh, persnickety <laughs> problem. And I, I think what you know, what Emily would probably say is, you know, sometimes we think that oh, it's a small space, it'll be easier to scan. No, mm -hmm. when you get in a small skate space, you, you end up getting you know, a, a, you know, two doors next to each other yeah. where, where you don't have that ability yeah. to even to crack the door halfway open yeah. each door to slide the camera through. So, exactly. yeah. 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 So you mentioned that. And the other was, I think, um, uh, going through a hallway. Um, what, what else did you struggle with? I, uh, I think the other issue I came across uh, was a, uh, a large three-story house we did uh, last week. Uh, where it had two staircases and one was sort of like a big grand staircase from the first floor to the second floor, which didn't cause any problems. I was able to go up, you know, four steps at a time and in a straight line, linear line, no problem connecting with each one, uh, no problem aligning them. The issue was a sort of a servant staircase at the back of the house going from the kitchen up to the second story, which was... Uh, much steeper, much narrower, you know, only about two feet wide. And I started having problems right from the, the get go, right at the bottom, uh, where I'd gone uh, too many steps at, the, at once. And I found I had to go, in some cases, just one step or even two steps at a time in order for the new scan to align to the previous scan. Uh, I think Emily's back. Maybe she could address that for us. Maybe she's not back. Okay. Emily, can you hear us? So, uh, so Ian, I've been in the exact situation that you've described. And the way that I've solved that, uh, you know, I'm, and, and this is not fun, um, but, but it solves the problem of how do you get from one floor to the other when you have right. this, this issue is take the, take the tripod and put it on its shortest level, mm -hmm. as small as possible. And then, um, you know, you're going to have, uh, uh, you're still going up the stairs. You're going to then, from the smallest step, you're going to have to extend two of the poles down on the downside of the staircase right. and start moving up one step at a time so right. that you get all the way up to the top. Now, um, think about, that's not the walking experience. That was just no. getting the scanning exactly. to get from one floor to the other. Mm -hmm. Now go back and say, okay, what would be a logical place to say, I need to put the camera for somebody to actually walk up the staircase mm -hmm. um, and uh, then put the camera at the, at the correct, quote, correct height. Oh, uh, I see. Okay. Okay. And, and now in Matterport Workshop, you're going to hide all those low 
mm-hmm. Matterport exactly. cameras. They, exactly. they, they will count for the connectivity uh, to enable the dollhouse view. It enabled you to actually get from one floor to the other. Um, but you'll hide all those slow scans. And now the only scans that will be visible for walking through the space <clears throat> are, will be at the right height. Uh, and and the good news is, you, you, you know, you might have only needed one or two of those to jump from one floor right. to the next. And uh, that's and that's exactly what I did, Dan. Except I didn't do the the lower and the higher heights of the camera, which I will I'll try next time. But that's I would exactly- I would suggest if you ever get stuck where you're trying to scan from here to here and the scans won't connect, lower the tripod to its lowest possible height. Um, I think Emily would explain this as the camera is uh, is is looking for a plane and, okay. and so that, that uh, great. So let's a- let Emily pick that up. Sure. Oh, I hope we don't lose each other again. Um, but basically, this is exactly right. Any what the camera is going to need to have is to detect the plane and to detect that surface. And um, the lower it is to the ground, the better a chance it has at connecting to that plane. And if you think about it as, you know, you have your X and your Y, but you also have your Z plane, right? Like you have your Z. And so what you're trying to get is that Z um, to, to be able to create the 3D model. And so that's why if it's just the camera um, going around uh, or going up uh, two small stairs or you're trying to scan um, outdoors, um, that's one of the reasons it's very hard to scan outdoors is because we're missing walls. We're missing um, surfaces for the camera to bounce off of. In your staircase example, what I'm imagining was happening was that um, your error may have more likely than not been caused by repetitive space. Um, and not by there being no scan data. And also you don't have that 18 inches that you need on any side of the camera for it to read exactly what's going on. So you've shrunk down the information, you've made it very similar to itself because it's just repeating that same stare all the way up, even if it's turning a little bit. So that's a very challenging space for you to scan. And your only option at that point is to is to drop the camera down, because if the camera is up, then it's reading. Imagine all that it can get because 30 degrees in is chopped off on the bottom. And in a smaller space, the 30 degrees is actually a larger percentage of that entire sphere because there's you don't have the area around you right? So it's chopping off 30 below you. So all it sees is a flat wall and a flat wall. Does that make sense? And there's no differentiation there. It doesn't know. So I <laughs> hope that helps. Thank you. Thank you. It does. Yeah. Uh, good. So uh, uh, Emily, maybe we have one or two examples of something that you had, uh, you were out on a job, something failed, and how did you figure out how to solve that? And then Ian, I'll come back to you one last time and see if you have other questions before we wrap up. Sure, uh, exactly. Emily? Um, so I don't know, did you guys hear me try to explain about the electromagnetic field? I kept trying to do that and then kept getting cut off, which was really funny, but, um, uh, it was probably an electrical magnetic field that uh, cut you yes. off. We, we got to the point where, uh, you've identified yeah. that it was an electrical field, but okay. then what? Then what? Then what? So then what happened was we were fortunately able to contact. So the building also had a um, cell phone tower on top of it. And I was convinced that the cell phone tower at first was the issue. But then when we started to investigate it, I realized that the space I was scanning actually had a ton of computers in it. And what they had was a frequency from some of the router, some of the routers that was jamming um, the, uh, it was basically jamming and not allowing for the iPad to connect on Wi-Fi to my Matterport. And so um, they were able to turn that off to shut down that router. And when they shut down the router, Dan, it was, it, it was, possible for me to reconnect my compute, my computer, my camera to the iPad again. Um, and so what I learned is that, um, fortunately cell phone towers are not a problem, but electromagnetic, uh, disturbance is. So what you need to just make sure is that if all of a sudden you have a, 
uh, um, a, di a connectivity issue between the camera and the iPad, that what's likely causing that is some interference, some electromagnetic interference. And that, that, was, a, that was a new one for me. I was kind of hoping that you were going to say it was UFOs and was related to Area 59 and you, <laughs> and, uh, and yeah. you, you made a call to the Pentagon and you got them taken care of and then you were able yeah. to reconnect the camera with the, but I, I guess not. It was, uh, it was uh, uh, something else. It was something else, but it was like that. It felt like that because I felt like a hero when I was able to reconnect the camera, let me tell you, because it was, it was really stressful um, before I could connect it because it was just... It was only in one room and we couldn't figure out what was going on for a while. So. so so what other problems have you had and you almost pulled your hair out and then you were able to think it through because you understood how the camera and the technology was working and then felt like a hero again? Oh, so I felt like a hero again. Um, so, you know, I have had... Um, I've had so many alignment issue problems. Um, one of the very first scans that I did was in a, um, uh, was in a mausoleum, Dan. And so the mausoleum had glass everywhere. I mean, it was just, it was just unbelievable. The whole thing was made out of glass and, um, and it was a rep extremely repetitive space and um and all of these kinds of things and so again what what allowed me to get through this because i was able to scan half of it but then i couldn't scan the other half it's the whole basketball court um scenario where you scan half the basketball court but then you can't scan the other half um and so what i was able to do um was that um actually I think what happened was that our, my, my gear ended up in one of the shots and, um, that wasn't so great, um, initially because I was like, oh no, my gear is in one of the shots, but it ended up working like a, um, uh, like using it as a decoy, like staging it. Um, and that was, that enabled me to create some amount of a, a small enough amount of difference between the one scan and the other that I was able to then complete the model without, um, without having to completely abort the whole thing. So, um, that was, that was really helpful. Like you have to use props and, um, this was so long ago now, Dan, that it was like, you know, it was really like a very early on scan for me. And I hadn't really learned about that yet. I hadn't learned about issues in repetitive spaces. I remember having to, to either go on the forum or contact Matterport and say, why am I having this issue? Because I didn't even know that that was an issue. Yeah, so, so Ian, this is what you have to, to look forward to is, uh, is uh, helping identify problems and, ask, and then sharing them in the forum about, about how you had that aha moment. So yeah. uh, Ian, uh, do you have a parting question for Emily? Uh, yeah, I do. And as you as well, Dan. Uh, as you know, I was using a, an iPad 3 when we first started out. And I've got about seven or eight scans on that iPad 3 within the Capture app. So now we've got an iPad Pro, 256 gigabyte, love mm -hmm. it. Uh, you know, the alignment scans take like two to three seconds and they're, they're done. So is there any way of transferring from the iPad 3 to the iPad Pro those captures that we've already done? Or are they stuck on that iPad 3 forever? Emily, you wanna take that or you want me to answer that? Um, I don't think that there's a way to do it, but maybe there is a way to do it with using backups, et cetera. So, um, that would be the only way I would know how to attempt to do it would probably be using my iTunes backups. Um, but I've never tried to actually restore stuff that way. I mean, okay. I just back it up, but I don't, I haven't needed to restore it, but I don't think you can add but maybe you can. Uh, Dan, please, if, if you know the answer. Well, first, the follow-up for, for Ian. Do you have scans now on two different devices? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Unfortunately. Uh, <laughs> so what, 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 what I would have recommended, uh, and then I'll answer part two of the question, but what I would have recommended was first uh, using iCloud or iTunes back mm -hmm. up the entire device. So yeah. let's say you have device A and B that right. you would have backed up to, in, in my case, I, we use iCloud. So I would have backed up to 
iCloud device A, and then I would have started with the new device B that I just bought and did a restore of yeah. everything that was on A. That's in order a good idea. To have oh, it okay. B. Now I understand that that's not the scenario, so that's that's not going to help help you. But I, I thought I'd at least share that. Well, it's a it's something I haven't tried yet, so I mean, it's a possibility. Well, if you have original data on A and original data on B, uh, too bad, so sad. Be oh, I see. I get you. I get you. Now. Okay. So, but the way I would solve that is the the good news is that iCloud storage is so inexpensive. I mm -hmm. I mean, I'm I'm on a terabyte, two terabyte plans. Mm -hmm. I, I can't answer the question of, you know, how much is it, but let's say it's 99 cents a month or something for iPad A, I would create a unique um, um, Apple ID, mm -hmm. different email address mm -hmm. for iPad A, and I would upload that to the iCloud and I would I would someplace, you know, for uh, for me, it would be a Google sheet to say Apple ID um, Dan at Gmail or whatever it might be mm -hmm. equals uh, November 1 through November 29th, 2017. And I would probably make a note on what those models were because they're so few. Right. And I would save them like that. And then for for iPad A, I would just take it down to zero and use it for some other purpose, which you're probably going to do and right. delete that data. Okay. On iPad B, mm -hmm. I would have my own separate Apple ID mm -hmm. uh, so that I and, 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 and frankly, you know, if let's say you get to, you know, you, you fill up an iPad. Go create a separate ID for it and now just follow the same process so that if you ever needed to come back. Now, I, uh, this, so far, does that make sense? Yeah, perfect. Okay. Yeah. No, but I, I, I really do. I just want to have a little editorial comment here because I, I know that Matterport actually reads every word of the Matterport of the We Get Around Network forum and they watch WGAN uh, TV. Uh, thank you, folks at Matterport, for watching. You, we've Our wish list for for Christmas, for New Year's, for Kwanzaa, for Hanukkah, is to please give us a backup system. We're photographers. We're, we're, we're hoarders by nature. We don't throw things out. There may be a reason that we always need to come back to it. We're already uploading our models to the Matterport cloud, so you already have our content. Give us a way to, to have us be able to upload our content to the cloud and be able to remove it from our device or, so that we don't have to keep buying more iPads. We don't have to keep having separate uh, Apple IDs to do uh, iCloud. This this is like a, this is a kerfuffle. It doesn't make any sense to any of us. I'm mm -hmm. sure it doesn't make sense to you, Matterport uh, team. So, you know, please for Hanukkah, for Christmas, for Kwanzaa, for New Year's, give us a way to, to back up that is just easy, fast, simple, and logical. And obviously, if we're already uploading it to your cloud, you already have our models. So either give us a way to, to download back to our device, either an individual model or a group of models, or all our models. Because I know I don't want to throw anything away because I know that you're going to figure something out in the future, some new service, and I, and I may need to come back to my original model and I just don't want to throw it out. And I'm depressed that our entire community is thinking, oh, I'm about to fill up my iPad. I got to you know, delete models. And then somebody's going to come out and say, hey, you know, if you have that original model and you upload it to, to our account, you know, we'll buy you out on it because we're, we're going to create a, a library of floor plans to, to serve up to, 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 you know, to, to real estate platforms. And therefore mm -hmm. uh, we, you know, you, you know, we heard that Matterport, you know, has a hundred thousand, 200,000, whatever it is models. Well, actually you, the photographer has those models and they're valuable, you know, to us. So here's what we want you to do. We want you to, you know, uh, download the, 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 um, the object file. And from that ob object file, we'll be able to create an entire new product or service that doesn't have anything to do with the real estate. You know, I, I don't even know what the example, I don't, I don't know what I don't know, but I, I know that I don't want to throw anything out because I think it has value. Anyway. No, you're I, right. Dan, you're 100% you're right. And I can tell you right now that there are companies being built 
that will have a, that will create a demand for the 3D data. And there's no question about it. I mean, those companies are, and, and the OBJs that you just spoke of, those are already valuable. And uh, I think that right now we don't have a, um, a marketplace for them, but we will have a marketplace for them. And that's, that's really one of the things that as we move into, this is sort of the future and the long view of everything and why Matterport is so important um, as this early um, and very innovative way for people um, like Ian, like myself, like you to become skilled in spatial mapping it's because we will be living in a future there that is that has been mapped and so the 3d data is far more important than actually the spaces themselves um so i don't want anybody to delete their models um i don't want them to delete the data and i think that uh you know that really there is there's a there's a huge value in that uh, I'm, I'm tingling hearing you say that because I, I, I actually believe there's more value in the data, as you mentioned, than what we've scanned. And if, if over time we scan 100, 200, 300, 500 spaces and we hold on to our spaces rather than deleting them uh, through this cockabally process that I've described of creating unique Apple IDs in order to be able to you know, take a device down to zero and be able to use the device again. And then if you have to restore, go back to, to that particular you know, set of iCloud to ID to restore. Um, but it, the, there's this library that we're creating. I think of it as stock imagery, but it's, it's not the imagery, it's the data. And the, the, the simplest metaphor I can go for is, is imagine a company that just uh, creates that that serves up a floor plan to the address at three four two three Piedmont Road uh, in Atlanta, uh, and the the value add that they're doing for an MLS is is serving up floor plans for a a house that's for sale. Uh, and that that doesn't and that has nothing to do with all the furniture in the house that's now changed over time. Uh, that mm -hmm. that floor plan is probably pretty good. They might put a date on it of when it was created. Yeah. And I just think, oh well, I, I own in theory I own that data, and I want to be able to have that object. And I, and, the, and I don't want to download the object file today because it's 125 meg. I don't have a use for it today. But at some point, maybe it's really going to be important to go back to the original model, download the data, and then upload it to someone else who's willing to buy me out or license my my content. So, and Ian, you asked a really good question. I apologize if you've gotten this long-winded answer. The, the short answer is there's not really, there's not really a um, uh, a, a logical backup solution that makes sense. Yeah. Um, I think if you asked Matterport, um, and, I, and I hope you do, Ian, and just, you know, for, for sake of an exercise, I think what they would come back and they would give you, you know, these, you know, a list that's about this long to say, if you do this and then this and then this, and mm -hmm. you use this software program, this is the way you can export your model and then import it back. But I promise you that that solution is only for the geekiest of us. And, and I yeah. am, I am really, that's not me. <laughs> and, and it's not me. I may be really, you know, geeky, but you know, to me, that is like, really, you would actually tell someone uh, that this is the way that you can export a model and bring it back in. Uh, it's frightening. It actually yeah. is to me. It's it's totally frightening. So totally. anyway, no, Dan, you're right on with that. And Ian's question is like such a great question, and we do want to back up our stuff. And right now, that's our only option is doing the iTunes or the um, iCloud backups. Um, and we need it. We need a solution for that. And then we also really need to have, um, you know, a way to store the the OBJs and to store all of that big data that we want to have. Like we want to have the point clouds. We want to have the OBJ files. Um, and so we'll get there, but we don't we don't have that yet. Yep. So Hanukkah is coming up. Christmas is coming up. Kwanzaa is coming up. New Year's is coming up. I'll, I'm going to I'm going to hope we're all going to get a, a present for the new year. If, if it's not implemented by the end of the year, maybe we'll at least get a, you know, a, an announcement or acknowledgement that we hear your we Dan, we hear your pain. Uh, 
collectively for the entire We Get Around Network Forum community. And here is what our roadmap is for 2018 and, and, and where that stands. Anyway, e Emily, I know we've been going for about two plus hours. I, I just want to thank you so much uh, for doing this uh, Matterport scanning for, for newbies. Um, uh, I, I just found it really terrific and I, I appreciate you taking the time to do this. Yeah. And I want to add that as same thing, uh, Dan, Emily, thank you so much for uh, doing this. Uh, it's been a big help and I look forward to uh, any future uh, episodes that you're going to do. Ter terrific, Ian, thank you. And I, I think Emily just froze. Emily, you're there? Oh, yeah. <laughs> she, she, she just froze, but I'll I'll, okay. I'll, I'll I'll wrap it up and just say, Emily, namaste. Thank you so much for uh, uh, your uh, um, uh, two-part uh, training on uh, scanning. Uh, we, we, we hope you come back and, uh, and, and join us uh, more. We're just uh, so thankful for you uh, joining us today. Um, and uh, are, Emily, are you back? She's there, but we can't see her. We sort of, she's sort of, she's, I don't know. So anyway, um, we've been, uh, we've been going at it for almost two hours. Uh, we'll, uh, we'll record this program. Our, our big thanks to Emily Ullman, founder, Hopscotch Interactive, based in San Francisco, also serving uh, Long Beach and uh, through her partner in Berlin. Uh, uh, thank you, Emily. Ian, great thank questions. You. Oh, ba you're back. Great, Emily. Th th thank you so much, Emily. Oh, of course, Dan. This was amazing. And I, I, uh, I hope I can come back and uh, do some more, uh, you know, educational stuff with the rest of the, the, uh, the folks on the forum. I have, um, I'd love to do this one next. Um, I want to do the Matterport Scenes app, um, which would be so fun and I, I love it. And I think it's going to be a blast. I know that not everybody has one of these, but again, I want to teach you about what's possible. So that's what we're going to do because I think it helps you when you play with this is only point cloud. And when you understand the point cloud, you understand so much more about the Matterport itself. So um, yeah, we're going to do that one next. Awesome. Uh, so you, you heard it here first. The uh, uh, Emily Ullman, founder Hopscotch International, Hopscotch Interactive, uh, <laughs> is going to be back on the We Get Around uh, Network channel, WGAN TV. We'll do an entire program uh, uh, on that device, capturing data, scanning, etc. Et so yeah, uh, I so also have a brand new. I have a new. I have the old Gear VR, and I just got the new one, Dan. So this is the old one. And um, I have the new S8 and the new um, Gear VR version for the S8. So we could unbox that and do that as, a, as one as well. So that awesome. we, we can do. Awesome. We'll do that as a separate show. So thank you again, uh, Ian. Great questions. You added so much to the program today. Really appreciate it. Emily, thank you again. Uh, Emily Omen, founder, uh, Hopscotch Interactive. I'm Dan Smigrod, founder of the We Get Around Network Forum. You've been watching WGAN TV live at 5, Wednesday, November 29th, 2017, from San Francisco and from Atlanta. And Ian, we're in Canada. Ottawa, Ontario. And from Ottawa. Thanks all. Bye bye. Thanks, everybody. Bye. Thank bye -bye. you. Bye bye. Okay. Thanks, Dan. Thank, thank you thank all. You. And I'm going to hit end the meeting and then I'm going to run off to dinner. And I know, Emily, I'll send you an email just to thank you. And Ian, thank you again for, for being on the program today. Perfect. Thanks, everybody. Okay. Bye. Bye.